Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash Dan's Book Reviews. Dan Dan the Art Man's Book Reviews, Episode 56, The Way of Kings, by Brandon Sanderson. This is going to be an interesting review. I'll start out with some positives because I'm a positive guy. I just finished the book a couple days ago, and I can't wait to read the next book. The way the book wrapped up was awesome, and it made me yearn for the next book in the Stormlight Archive series. Everything else I've read by Brandon Sanderson, other than his YA titles, I've loved. Maybe that's uh, middle grade. It's the evil librarian. Uh, wasn't a fan. He is one of my favorite authors. I love his podcast, Writing Excuses. I met him in real life, and he was funny, genuine, and kind. I'm glad he's young, so I'll be reading his books for a lifetime. Okay, all of that said... I gave this book 3 out of 5 stars because the first 75% of it bored me to death. Reading the first two acts of the story was like an uphill climb. When you're reading a thousand plus page or 47 and a half hours of audio book, that's a lot of reading of story you don't like. I didn't care about the characters until that last act of the book. It felt like almost every scene was just characters in a room talking. Hardly anything happened. I knew going into this book that it was the first in what is planned as a long series of books, so I know he had a lot of stuff to set up. But that doesn't mean it has to be boring. I have many friends who were never bored reading this book and gave it five stars and raved about it to me. It bored me to tears, and the only reason I kept reading it was that I have loved Sanderson's other work and that people said it was worth reading. By the end of it, I was totally on board. But until then, I was switching to other books and then reading through The Way of Kings when I could stand it. Okay, so now you know why I gave the book 3 out of 5 stars, but let me end with this. The stuff at the end of the story is some of the coolest, most epic stuff I have ever read. It was amazing. I loved every minute of it and couldn't wait for more. Now that I've finished the book, I'm eagerly waiting for my audible.com credit to come in for the month so I can download the next one and start listening. From an io9.com article I read, I have really high hopes for the second one called Words of Radiance. Uh, I've since read it, and I loved it the whole way through. It was awesome. Plus, I'm now invested in what happens to the characters. I can't wait to read book two. I'm anticipating at least a four out of five star rating for it. <laughs> awesome. That makes me curious what I did rate the second book in the series. I'm pretty sure that I actually gave it five out of five stars. Yep. <laughs> I gave the second one five out of five stars. The third one isn't out yet, and I cannot wait to read it. By the way, I have some really great news for you. As you heard, the audiobook is like 47 and a half hours long for this book, which means that the narrator and editors and producer, everyone making that audiobook spent a lot of loving care and time making that book, which will give you a ton of great listening experience. This is a very expensive audiobook. Which is why I have great news for you, the listener of this podcast. You can get it for free if you go to audibletrial.com slash Dan's Book Reviews. You can get a free copy 
of The Way of Kings, Book 1 of the Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson. Narrated by the great Kate Redding and Michael Kramer, the two narrators who narrated all of the Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan. Masters at long-form epic fantasy narration. Now, like I said, I didn't care much for the first 75% of this book, but go check out the reviews or ask one of your friends who likes fantasy. They'll probably all tell you that they gave it 5 out of 5 and loved every second of it. For some reason, it just took me a long time to become interested in the characters. The magic system and the story world were really cool, but like I said, I just didn't care. But by the end, it's like, wow, this is one of the best books I've ever read. I just had to, it just had to get its hooks into me. So yeah, go to audibletrial.com slash Dan's Book Reviews for your free 30-day trial of Audible services and one free audiobook You'll get any audiobook of your choice, but this week I highly recommend The Way of Kings, The Stormlight Archive, Book 1, by Brandon Sanderson, narrated by Kate Redding and Michael Kramer. Now, let's get back to that review. Alright, so this is a pretty interesting book. It's about a young man who is... I guess, or was like a surgeon. And through a bunch of terrible things, he ends up being almost like a slave in an army. And he has the worst possible job. It is so physically grueling that it just kills people. If you look at the awesome cover, you'll see two warriors standing across a vast chasm from each other. And the people that go to war have to uh, carry these insanely heavy huge bridges tons and tons of men all work together to carry just on foot carry these huge bridges so that they can put them down across these large chasms so that they their army can get to the enemy and fight them so you get to see him going through the grueling training that he undergoes uh, i think his name's kaladin and I always have loved the, the fantasy style names that Brandon comes up with. And that's just really intense and uh, pretty interesting. But there's a whole lot of building of the world. And uh, as there needs to be with a, a thousand plus page book, which is the first of what's going to be like, I think, a dozen books in the series or something like that. So, there's and there's tons of cool characters, but there's that one and then... There is Shalon, who is this girl who is in training under this very powerful magician, um, witch, I guess, magician lady, uh, a lady who has this kind of ring that has all this magical power. And Shalon's character, to me, was kind of annoying for a long time. But then some really crazy stuff starts to happen to her. Um, and actually, one thing I really did like about her is that she is a visual artist, just like I am. So just like I did in college, I took my sketchbook with me wherever I went, and whenever I could, I was sketching and practicing my drawing. And she is a very accomplished artist, and she's constantly drawing in her sketchbook whenever she doesn't have to uh, perform her studies. And some really interesting, magical stuff starts to happen with her sketchbook that was really creepy and really awesome and opens up other worlds, I guess I might say. I don't want to spoil anything, but there's a lot there to unpack and I can't wait to find out more about this. I'm also reading The Dark Tower right now and there's other worlds. It's, it's like that, but uh, not so bizarre. And, well, it's really bizarre. Anyway, so yeah, Kaladin and Shalon's stories are really awesome and they sort of meet together at the end and so by the three-quarter mark of this book I was totally invested in these characters and loved them and wanted to know what was going on but for some reason it took me a long time to uh, get to that place I'm, I'm sure you've heard me talk many times about this book because of that reason in other book reviews but anyway just goes to show you that sometimes even if you didn't like the first three quarters of a book, 
By the end, it could end up being your favorite book. Pretty crazy. Uh, a lot of people say if a book doesn't catch them by the first page or chapter, they'll just put it down. I have a hard time putting books down because my OCD kicks in and I just have to finish something I started. But the main reason I finished this book is because everything else I've read by Brandon, other than his middle grade, um, Alcatraz versus the Evil Librarians, I didn't like that one very much. But that one he doesn't outline, he just kind of, the seat of the pants just free writes it, and maybe that's why I didn't like it, I don't know. Everything else I've read by him just blew me away and I thought was amazing. And tons of my friends loved every second of this book. So I kept reading, even though it was kind of work, and I was high, I was rewarded. Just like with Dune, that was really hard for me to get into, but by the time I finished it, I was so glad I had soldiered on. So check this book out, unlike me, you'll probably like every single page or every minute of the audiobook. Go to audibletrial.com slash Dan's Book Reviews to get this monster 45 and a half hours for free. It's a huge value. And uh, if you do that, it supports the show. So thank you. Thank you to Audible. Hope you guys are having a great year of reading in this early year of 2017. My birthday is in a few days on January 15th. I'll be turning 34. And hopefully this will be another year where I publish some of my own books. I'm writing one that I'm either going to call Ghost Slaying Realtor or Haunted House Flipper about a realtor who wants to become a house flipper who finds some magical items that help him get rid of ghosts. So he starts to buy up properties that people think are haunted because no one wants to buy them so he can get them really cheap. He buys haunted houses, gets rid of the ghosts with his magical sword, and the ghosts are actually demons. And since demons are fallen angels and angels have swords, there's going to be some dueling going on. So then he renovates the house after the ghosts or demons are gone and then sells it for a huge profit. So that's my fun idea. I'm about uh, almost 10,000 words into it. It's going to be really fun. I'm really excited about it. And if you go to dandantheartman.com, you can find a post that was posted on January 12th about helping me try and come up with a title for that book and you can see the mock covers I've made with a couple titles I chose. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys this week. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. Mike, take it away. This podcast is licensed under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivative works license. Music by Kevin McLeod, found at incompetech.com. The website that goes with this podcast can be found at dandantheartman.com. And you can follow Dan on Twitter, Google+, and Facebook at Dan Dan the Art Man. For Dan, this is Mike Luoma saying happy reading, and we'll see you next time.